The Romans called it Lomia, or Infera Insula, Low Island. Legend has it that the Earl of Goodwin inherited land on it until the great sea floods of 1014 or 1099 swept everything away. Of the legend, only the floods can be verified, which were possibly caused by a tsunami after an earthquake or a strong tidal surge that was the consequence of a storm in the North Sea. Either way, the Goodwin Sands has not only been a magnet to ships as a ship swallower, but also to people who have a strange desire to visit. The Goodwin Sands are located off the coast of Ramsgate, Deal and St Margaret's Bay. The shallowest part of the 10-mile sandbank begins at its northernmost point, five nautical miles out from Ramsgate, and ends a mere three miles from shore, off St Margaret's Bay. Over the realm of time, the Goodwin Sands has probably accounted for at least 2,000 shipwrecks and countless loss of lives. Ghost stories surround the sands, with tales of sightings of spectral vessels being seen crashing into the surf and mysteriously disappearing when their rescuers arrive. Regardless of all the myths, the Goodwins are a prominent feature off the Kent coast. In the past, men have tried to make use of the treacherous sandbank as a safe haven for shipwrecked mariners and also as a warning to vessels that stray too close. Admiral Bullock erected a safety beacon upon them in 1840 in the form of a 40-foot mast with a platform or gallery construction that would hold 30 to 40 mariners. This refuge beacon lasted for four years until a careless Dutch vessel ran it down. Eventually, the lightships that surrounded the Goodwins marked the dangers and their crews kept an eye out for impending mishaps. Incredulously, in 2003, there was a commissioned report to turn the Goodwin Sands into a 24-hour passenger and freight airport, along with two runways. On the northern area of the Goodwins, at low water, the sand lies exposed. All around the sandbank are swillies or deep holes that remain filled with the seawater. Elsewhere, gullies and mini sand dunes are formed, which will start to crumble beneath your feet. When the unwary try to paddle in the foxholes or the deep puddles, it is then that they feel the suction of quicksand. Nevertheless, this situation gives little fear to the alleged colony of 350 seals. However, in the past it has given cause for much concern and grievance to humans. Even the famed deal boatmen, or hovelers, have been known to misjudge the conditions on the Goodwins. The large galley punt, Wanderer, visited the wreck of the sailing ship, Frederick Carl, which had been run aground on the sea bank on the last day of October, 1885. The Wanderer's two-man crew's intention was to salvage some of the cargo. With an increasing northeast wind, the sands started to cover as the young flood tide swept over the banks. As the sand shivered beneath their feet, the two boatmen tried in vain to make it back to their own craft. When the sea encroached up to their waists, the men realised that luck was against them and waded back to the abandoned hulk of the Frederick Carl. After the lifeboat, Mary Somerville arrived. The crew only managed to save one of the deal men. The other was found the following day, dead, tangled in the wreck's rigging. The desire to do the unusual has always held a fascination for some, and to visit the Goodwin Sands as a fun day out is no exception. They have been visited by thousands over the years for various reasons, 
and still attract the curious. It is known that the sands hold vast amount of treasure, both archaeological as well as financial. In recent years, a Dutch East Indiaman called the Roosvik was found by a diver, and a believed million-pound cargo of silver coins and bullion were recovered. Annual cricket matches on the Goodwin Sands are a myth, and have only been played spasmodically over the years. The first recorded game was in the summer of 1813, which caused criticism from the public as a blasphemy against all those unfortunate victims buried beneath the rapacious sands. In July 2006, the BBC film crew, who were making the well-known television programme Coast, thought it would be a good idea to make a feature of a cricket match being played upon the sands. As the tide started to make, the skipper of the craft who took them out urged that they should evacuate with haste. The TV crew pleaded for another ten minutes to finish the take. That was all it took. The tide changed against a northeast wind, and the surf built up and swamped the vessel and its outboard engines. Several thousand pounds of film cameras were washing about in the bilge, and the disabled boat and the occupants were at risk of being stranded. It took two lifeboats from Ramsgate and Warmer, plus the rescue helicopter, to avert a tragedy. At that time, Coast Guard sector manager Andy Roberts summed up the situation by stating, The sands can appear safe, but if landing, very careful consideration must be given to tides, the weather forecast and the prevailing conditions. The Goodwind sand should be treated with the utmost respect by visitors. This advice, unfortunately, has not always been observed by many, much to their misfortune, and sometimes this endeavour has led to grief.